I have this uh, Japanese saw that we talked about in a previous, a couple of previous videos. Nice thing about these saws is they cut on the pulse stroke as opposed to the push strokes. Lots of control for cleaning out those fret slots. These frets were actually uh, were glued in, so I'm cleaning all that gunk out. We'll get a perfect fit without any type of adhesive. So there was an issue with the lay of the neck on this one, so I'm going to kind of true that up, and we're going to be doing a compound radius on this one. So it'll go from 14 up here down to 17 inch radius at the top of the neck. The other thing I like about these saws is the actual depth of the teeth on this saw is like perfect to receive any fret tangs. Once those teeth disappear as you're sawing, once you see them sink into the fingerboard, you know you've got just enough depth for the uh, fret wire. I buy these at the local uh, surplus store and I think they're eight dollars and ninety five cents each like I said because it's a surplus store as you know you gotta kind of watch it so if you do come across them you know buy a half a dozen of them at that price in the last year for years yeah when you're fretting a fan fret fingerboard uh, there's a couple of things that you know you, you need to be aware of um, especially when you're edge dressing but even in preparation I, you'll see me go through this whole thing uh, I really prepare those fret ends so you don't have too much fret end uh, protruding beyond the outside of the fingerboard so when you do go to dress you know you're not jarring that fret on the outside and loosening it up and we'll as always give you a, a detailed play-by-play -play as we do this you can see why I've got a, obviously got a fret guard on the top of the guitar to protect the top of the guitar obviously and like I mentioned previously uh, the nice thing about this saw it's 22 thou, like right on the money. It's the perfect width for the tang of the fret wire. And that's it, we're ready to level. We always start by preparing the load on the truss rod before we go and level the neck. Now this is a two-way truss rod. And for those of you that are not familiar with the two-way truss rod, uh, the way this works is uh, when you tighten the truss rod, it works like a conventional truss rod, which counteracts the pull of the strings and pulls the neck down. Strings want to pull the neck up like a banana. You tighten it, straight, straightens the neck back down. But when you come to the end of the thread, uh, that, this is loose, but if I keep turning counterclockwise, then what this does is it actually puts the same type of force that the strings do so it actually pulls the neck up. All truss rods are not equal, some work better than the others. Uh, I'm most comfortable just with a, a traditional truss rod myself but I just thought I'd give you a heads up on that thing. There's a lot of them out there now, a lot of two-way truss rods, it's a fairly common thing. Uh, okay so I'm coming back to this sort of neutral area. Okay so that's loose. I like to put just a little bit of load on that truss rod. Now we're going to true the neck uh, dead level along the trajectory of the string path, but this will be a compound radius. So it'll be 14 inches on this end, 17 on this end. And like you've seen in that previous Strat video where I did the 14 inch radius, yeah, this is done in pretty short order on the top. Uh, the real problem area, I've sort of chalked it out in the fingerboard here, uh, it's right at the neck junction. How many times have you heard me say that? So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to take this down so that we get the neck nice and low. So I've made up my radius gauge, it's a 17 and a 14. We're going to start at the top end because there's a bit of an issue with sort of a hump there at the neck to body junction which you see all the time. I'll show you, this is a small sort of scrub block that I use uh, and it's quite a bit narrower than the fingerboard, that's exactly what you want because we want to take down the center portion of the fingerboard and reduce the radius. Now there is a slip of leather on there and that block easily flexes to that 17 inch radius. So we're going to concentrate on this end first and starting in the center I'm avoiding the outside edge of the fingerboard. I want to explain this. So this is actually an 80 grit sandpaper. It's fairly aggressive. We're going to just take that sort of neck to body hump out of there first um, and I'm always after my students for this uh, in the classes when you're done when you've leveled the fingerboard completely and you're ready to put frets in this outside edge here should be sharp 
to the touch. You want the underside of the crown of the fret to sit flush, tight against the wood of the fingerboard on that outside edge. Once all the frets are installed, then you can soften that edge a little bit when you do that when you're doing your edge dress. It's just part of the job. Quickly take down that high spot at that junction, that divide junction. In this case, we're really dealing with this distance from here to here. So I want to go beyond that a little bit, but not way up the neck. I really want to check this immediate area where we're working. You know something? It's done. That's how quickly, this is real time by the way, that's how quickly we took care of that high spot. Now I'm going to continue with a slightly longer block. And with this longer block, we're going to blend back into this portion of the fingerboard. This is the last run of 80 grit. I'll go to a longer block next with a slightly lighter grit of sandpaper. I'm going to stop in a second and just check it with our 17 inch radius gauge that I made up and see how close we are to that 17 on this top end. Still a little high. Now I'm working towards that outside edge. Check it again. And we have arrived. Yeah, we've got a perfect 17 up here. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a longer block, working my way in this direction and get this radius down to 14. All right, now we've dropped down to a 120 grit on a slightly longer block. Again, much narrower than the fingerboard. We want to be able to see the fingerboard as we're working on it, stop and check as we go. This end of the fingerboard along the string path is nice and straight now. And we also have our 17 inch radius. Now I've got my 14 inch radius uh, gauge and I'm just going to check that right now. And oh yeah, that's, that's like a nine and a half. Or so. I want to start in the middle. Nine and, a, nine and a half inch radius is much higher. Right, so we want to take that center portion down first, blend to the outside edge to give us that perfect 14. So we'll take this down to 14 and then we're going to blend the 14 into the 17. Just the center portion, not going to the outside yet. I like to keep a series of straight edges handy from a, a short 2 inch one to kind of check if there's one high fret, right up to a 34 inch length for checking uh, base scales and setting up bases. Uh, uh, what I like to do is I like to sort of section off the fingerboard, kind of check it as I go and just make sure there's no high spots. I'm looking for light through there and pretty well got it perfect. Uh, the uh, lay of the neck along the string path is dead straight. We've established that 17 inch radius up here and we've more or less established that 14 here. Still a little bit to go yet but at this stage now I want to go full length so that I'm blending that 14 into the 17. You really have to think about that sort of conical shape of the fingerboard like an ice cream cone. That slip of leather on that jointed block easily flexes and finds those radiuses automatically. I have a considerably longer block now and I'm going to start at this end and I'm going to go all the way down each stroke. And you should be able to feel the sharpness when you're done along this outside edge and that is sharp to the touch. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit further then I'm going to stop and check the compound radius 14 to 17 and see how we do. Right now it's pretty well bang on 14 at this point and then it starts to get even shallower. Uh, we already checked the 17 right at this end and it's perfect. Yeah we just got to blend those two radiuses together. Still a little bit high along here so I'm going to concentrate once again on the center of the fingerboard and just go along that string path get, get this right down to 14 here. Now we've got a fresh piece of 120 and we're going to finish the job blending that 14 into our 17. And now we will actually take it right to the outside edge and do one last check with the double radius gauges and then we'll get ready to put those frets in. Here's how I set up to do a fret job. I basically got that loop of fret wire uh, right over top of the neck and clip off the pieces as I need them. As you can see and I mentioned in that uh, Les Paul custom swap over like look at the stuff on my bench. It's always like that. I've got heaps of tools. I'm getting the job done. As you can see, the guitar is elevated. I don't have to worry about scratching the guitar. It's not getting anywhere near that stuff on the bench. Uh, this is my kind of rough fit. Those frets are not tapped in yet. All those fanned frets are now 
rough cut. They're just laying loosely on top of all their perspective slots. What I wanted to bring up here is I don't know where the idea of like hanging a fret an inch and a half over the edge of the fingerboard and then cutting it off that never made any sense to me whatsoever. This is my rough fit for the fret. Every single one of those frets I will buff the end of the fret on the buffer before I tap the fret into place. The reason I do that is so that when you go to edge dress the frets and bring them flush with the wood on the outside of the fingerboard you're not jarring the fret loose and this is where frets typically loosen up on the outside edge so that's why I do it the way I do it it's not just the best way to do it but it's it's the easiest and most logical way to do it I'll be giving you a play-by-play -play. you'll see this whole thing A to Z these frets are all cut to length now and the ends are buffed. Right off the hop these things will be close to a perfect fit. So when I do get around to doing the edge dress there'll be no issues with loosening the frets up on the outside edge because it'll just be a few light passes and the edge dress will be done then I'll I am checking the depth of each fret as I go, just because we took quite a bit off this fingerboard to get it to behave itself. So because we've done all this preparation ahead of time, uh, and guaranteed a perfect fit for every fret, it makes this part of the job really the easiest part of the whole fret job. When I go to do the edge dress, that file will just glide right along there, no problem at all. Perfect. Nice mechanical fit. So I've got all these frets in order, pluck them off one at a time, and in they go. Now these last few frets, because we've got that tapered end, I want to get this this side of the fret so I don't have to touch it. After. This side is easy enough to dress. This is very difficult to get to. We want to bring this side right up flush and then any, any extra length will come off that side. Frets are in, now we're onto the edge dress. And that's it. We've, we've reduced that job of leveling the frets on the outside of the fingerboard down to less than a minute. Because these frets are kind of feathered in that direction, I'm actually starting at the top end of the fingerboard here and then making my way up. You want to go with the direction of the slants. We're talking seconds here, not minutes to uh, flush up these frets on the outside edge. Okay, once again, the auger file, just a couple of strokes, nice and easy. This is the other reason, like I mentioned earlier in the video, the outside edge of the fingerboard should be sharp to the touch, so that those crowns lay flush and tight against the wood. There's no... Very important. I'm not touching any of this. This has all been buffed, like I mentioned earlier. We just leave it alone. It's already perfectly buffed doesn't need to be touched.
you know, see people futzing forever, you know, with the edge, edge of the frets, but there's no need for it. If you put them in properly, all you're doing is just nicking off that tip on the inside edge. That's it. And this is our completed fanned fret, fret job. Okay, so this one's all done. Frets are in, level dressed, edge dressed, polished. Now Ryan is actually a tech himself and he is going to kind of take it from here. So he's got some new pickups he wants to put in so, it. And anyway, I got him through the, the worst of it here and uh, we corrected the lay of the fingerboard, did our compound radius, all the new EVO frets are in. These frets are a uh, 100 wide and 51 thou high the crown it, it, it turned out really good i'm very happy with it kind yeah. of a neat looking guitar i'm i'm sorry i maybe someone else will sort of recognize that logo i know it's a young guy from hamilton ontario that builds these and this was a very to be fair to him this is a very very early model of his I, uh, apparently he's doing quite well now as a builder um, and anyway i thought it was kind of an interesting guitar so there you go fan fan fret fret job over and out cheers